Happy Saturday, guys. How are you? Welcome in to another episode of the Daily Juice Podcast on Championship Saturday. My name is Matt Peralta. You guys can follow me across all socials at Sports Talk Matt. This podcast being brought to you by OmahaSteaks.com. OmahaSteaks.com. Promo code JUICE saves you $30 at checkoff, checkout. You guys see the 50% off savings going on right now. Great opportunity to buy this for a loved one for Christmas. Plenty of time to get this sent in for the holiday season. Check it out at omahsteaks.com. Promo code JUICE to save $30 off at checkout plus 50% off savings site-wide. Minimum purchase may be required. Okay, so one in one last night. Do you guys know that I got one bet right yesterday? And the one bet was the official play on the over for the Nuggets and the Suns at 224. So here's the thing. Two days ago, I went 6-0, and I think it was, on my personal plays. And a bunch of you guys in the Discord channel, because I was talking about different hockey plays and things I was making. And they said, Matt, why don't you just make everything official? And I said, look it. There are plenty of days where you don't want my personal plays to be official. You want my best plays that are made official. My favorite plays of the day, the ones I like the best, the ones that are official plays, are ones that I want tracked because that should be on the record as to what I am betting. Like That's my place. There are bets and plays I make all the time that I could never track, that would never make any sense. For instance, I told you that I bet the devils on the puck line, but I also doubled down. When they were down by a goal, one nothing. I took the Devils at minus one goal. They lost six to three. I lost three units in that game. <laughs> that one game knocked out three units. I had team total for Oregon. They almost got there, 31. That lost. I took money line live, Oregon, during the game. Money line, minus 125. Lost that. Another two units plus lost there. I had... Uh, what else did I bet? Oh, I had a, I had two, a parlay and a teaser. No, no, no. a parlay or oh, two parlays, money line parlay and a parlay with the spread a thing we do on the Bostonian versus the book. I took New Mexico state plus 11 and a half and money line for them. Kind of a hail Mary money line parlay that would have paid. I think it returned like 60, 65 to one or something. It was just some crazy lottery ticket type of thing, but I lost all that. Okay. I lost every bet except for the bet, and then we lost, obviously, the first half over in that game between Washington and Oregon. I lost everything except one bet, and the one bet I made official was the basketball play. So just to give you guys an idea, I had a really, really good day on Thursday. I had a really, really bad day on Friday. It's gambling. <laughs> it's how it goes. So that's why I don't make plays official because I chase sometimes, you know, I make bad bets, I make bad plays, and I you know, things I don't love. That team total was scary. It was high. I didn't want to make it official. I thought the first half would have been good. If Michael Penix doesn't overthrow the receiver, that, sh that should have been 27-10 at the break. We should have gotten there. We were one touchdown short, and he overthrew a wide-open guy that could have ran, in, you know, kept on running for a touchdown that would have gotten us there. Unfortunately, we didn't get there. It was short from a 33 perspective. It was 20-10 to 10 instead of 27-10. to 10. So that's why that doesn't come in. Got the over on basketball, however. Okay? So... I did make Oregon a one unit plus 500 official play. Didn't hit. Again, another bet that I, but that bet doesn't cost us yet because that gets graded at the end of college football. Okay. So that won't be graded until January. So that's the one benefit about betting these things. Your money's tied up, but you don't have to pay it out. You don't, you know, it's not dead until we get to the end of the year. So that bet will be down. So we're down a unit already here on the future wagers. Let's update where we are. Florida State 10 to 1, Michigan 10 to 1. If you want to buy Texas, I don't hate it. Okay. If you don't want to play Texas money line here, just bet Texas to win. Texas wins and they're in to the playoffs. I really do believe that. Okay. Even if Alabama beats Georgia, Alabama SEC champ, the only hook would be if they put Georgia in over Texas, but Texas would be a big 12 champion and have a win over Bama. That should put them in. That should put Texas in, all right? So the one seed, Michigan's going to win today. Uh, there's no way they're losing to Iowa. I'm sorry, I can't see it. 
Michigan wins. They're the one seed if Georgia were to lose. Georgia wins. Georgia's the one seed. Okay? So if you want to take a Bama flyer, go right ahead. Okay? Uh, and I don't hate it. Take a Bama flyer. If you want to take a Texas flyer, don't hate it. You can do that. I, I'm i trying not to get like overly committed because I want to be able to hedge. I don't want to be able to go. I, you could, There's two theories, right? One is like buy all the tickets at plus money, and then you have it surrounded, and you, and you could add into your pile as you go. That's one, one theory. The other theory is take a couple of futures, wait to see how it plays out, what the bracket's going to be, and then bet and then hedge. I'm kind of going to go to the latter officially. I don't know. Maybe I'm going to get up in the morning or get up tomorrow morning and this morning, and I, and I go, all right, I'm betting Texas. All right, all right, I'm betting Alabama to win it all, okay? But for right now, I might wait to see the bracket because there is chaos potentially lurking for this thing. We know Washington is in. If Michigan wins, which I think they're going to, Michigan wins, Michigan's in. So you have Michigan and Washington who are both in. Georgia loses to Alabama. I think Bama's in. If Texas wins, I think Texas is in. I don't think we're going to see Oregon, who has two losses. They're gone. And I don't think Ohio State gets in because they won't have a college football championship or, sorry, a conference championship on their resume. So that's the problem here when you're looking at buying. I think Alabama and Texas are the only two, only other two futures that you could buy that would make sense. So that's kind of why, right? So, like, that's where I'm at. If why, if you're curious, like, like what we're doing with the futures, that's where I am with the futures. I don't think I'm going to do anything officially, but buying an Alabama future and buying a Florida and buying a Texas future is not that big of a deal because the one hook is Florida State, right? You know, Matt, you forgot about Florida State. You have a ten to one on that. Okay, I think they're losing today, and that's the first play officially for us here today. All right, I bet two units on Louisville plus one and a half. Now, technically, if Florida State wins by one, we'll win both bets, okay? So I'm laying two units at minus 110, okay? So 2.2 units down to win two units coming back. Why? We have a 10 to one on Florida State, all right? So I'm going to nibble into that. If FSU wins this game, we're going to bet against them in the playoffs. They are not winning two games, okay? They'll win one more game. They could win the ACC. It's possible, this would knock us down early. We'd lose two units, 2.2 units here today, and we're not going to recoup it until they play their first playoff game happening a month from now. So, yes, it'll put us down a little bit, and that's not great, but not the end of the world. Okay, we'll make it back. I think Louisville wins the game outright, though, all right? Tate Rodemaker has a concussion. He's a game-time decision, meaning he's iffy to play, and he's one hit away from being done. And then you have a true freshman going into that game running the offense against Louisville. Not great, okay? Not great. I understand the receivers for Florida State are phenomenal. We've backed Florida State. I loved Jordan Travis. I loved this team. That's why I took them on a 10-to-1 flyer to say, great, let's just put a stake down and hedge off of it. Well, I think we've got to hedge off of it ahead of time because if Louisville beats Florida State, they're out, and I think there's a good shot that Louisville is going to win this game here in the ACC. 2.2 units down on this, okay? Again, only bet this if you have the FSU future. If you don't, I wouldn't bet this, okay? Or bet it for one unit. Don't bet it for two, okay, if you have it. But officially, we're going Louisville in the ACC championship game, 2.2 units down to hedge off the Florida State future, okay? So head to hedge off that 10-to-1 ticket that we've got on FSU. We're going to hedge off of it. Just FYI on that, okay? Bet number two, and I think this is going to be wild, UNLV is hosting a Mountain West Conference championship game, and they are a dog. Why are they a dog? Well, Boise's got more experience, right? Boise and UNLV did not play. Total of this game is 60. I am also going to be on the over of this game, okay? But I'm going to avoid giving away totals here because championship game totals are dangerous, okay? They're, they're tough. Depending on what number you laid with Oregon-Washington, 65 is how it fell. 66, 66 and a half, 60, uh, 65 and a half, all didn't cash. 65 pushed, okay? We never saw 64 and a half, at least I didn't. 65 was the low, and it landed at 65. So these numbers are super sharp for these games. So I'm a little concerned. Total is 60. Uh, I'm on the over, but not officially. That's just a personal play on the over because it's dangerous to bet that. 
I'm taking the Rebels at plus two and a half. Here's why. UNLV did not have to win the game against San Jose State, and they knew it going in. We, I made the mistake. I bet UNLV against San Jose State. I didn't know. Okay, It was my fault. Barry Odom is going to have these guys ready to play. Everyone's just banking on Boise to win. And I could be wrong. I'm cold right now. So you want to take Boise? I'm not going to hand it away. You're like, man, I'm taking Boise State. Okay. Boise in the under, UNLV in the over. It's kind of how I think this game is going to go. If UNLV wins, UNLV is going to score a ton of points. They were outstanding against the number this year. Tremendous. They have two losses on the season. One to Michigan on the road. One at home to San Jose State in a game they did not need. This team... I think they're going to find a way to win this game. I think they win the game outright. But I'm going to take the two and a half points just in case. And I would love three, but there's no threes out there. You can buy it up, but I'm not going to buy it up because I think UNLV is going to win the game outright. Either they don't cover, okay? Either they're going to lose by seven or more, or they're going to wind up winning the game outright. And I think there's a decent shot to win the game outright. You can take it with a flyer money line bet. If you want to take it without the points, go ahead. It's plus money. But I'm going to take the two and a half just as insurance, if you will, on this. But I think UNLV had a chance to sit and stew. They're at home. Dogs in championship games. I like betting the dog in championship games. Look at Washington. Look what they just did. Same building. Taking the dog. UNLV plus two and a half up against Boise State in the Mountain West Conference championship game. That's bet number two. Bet number three. You guys are going to think this is a homer play, but Nick Saban is 7-0 in the SEC championship game. I have been questioning Carson Beck forever. I questioned him. I questioned Jalen Milrow. I questioned a lot of teams, elite quarterback, or te- elite teams with questionable quarterbacks. Alabama, Georgia, other teams as well, where we're like, you know what? Not seeing it. Alabama's been getting better and better and better. Crimson Tide are catching five and a half points in this game against Georgia. Georgia's defense is really good. Really good. But did you know Alabama and Georgia, the last 10 times they have played, it's gone eight and eight and two to the over? I like the over. I bet the over in this game too. Over 55. But because again, championship game totals worry me. And it could be, you know, one or two points on either side. I think Alabama loses this game by three points if they lose this game. And I think there's a real good shot Bama can win this game. Kirby Smart has done tremendously well against Nick Saban. I, I give it, I'll give it to you. Brock Bowers is going to be a really big problem. Bama's going to have to find a way to stop him. But Jalen Milrow, I think, could be a major problem for Georgia if he doesn't turn the football over. He has insane ability. He just doesn't have great passing ability. But the pass rush for Georgia is always what everyone talks about, like this unbelievable pass rush. Okay, Milrow runs a 4 4 If he gets loose, Jalen Milrow could cause all sorts of problems for Georgia. He needs to play an incredible game for Bama to win. But to keep it close, five and a half, it's kind of a squirrely number. The books kind of say, you tell me where to go with this number. I'm going to go with the experience of the Tide. I'm going to Carson Beck has never played in a game this big. He hasn't. Now Milrow has neither. Okay, I'll give you that. But Milrow just came up with an unbelievable miracle, literally, against Auburn, and that's huge. Okay, you might be like, oh my gosh, Auburn almost beat Alabama. How can they beat Georgia? That's the point. New Mexico State beat Auburn. Auburn came and almost beat Alabama. That's sports. That's what happens when we go out there and every time the ball goes up and the ball gets kicked off, you don't know what's going to happen chaos can happen. Georgia losing and Alabama winning, that's chaos. Washington in, Michigan in, Alabama in. Who's for? Texas. Who's the one? Michigan. Michigan versus whom? Probably Texas as the four seed, or maybe Bama as the four seed, and it's Texas as a three up against Washington. Alabama, Michigan in the national semifinal? (laughs) Wow. Wow. You don't get what they're after, really. They would love Washington, Michigan, okay? What they would want is Georgia to win. Georgia plays Texas because then you put it in the Rose Bowl for the final time, Pac-12, Big Ten, to say goodbye to that connection to the Rose Bowl as we know it because the Pac-10 is going away. 
Pac-12, sorry, going away. That's what they would dream. Georgia wins, but maybe Bama covers. Alabama plus five and a half. If you want more, take the over, over 55. I'm on that as well. But officially, Alabama plus five and a half. All right? All dogs so far. Louisville plus one and a half for two units. UNLV plus two and a half. Alabama plus five and a half. You want to tease all these games? Go right ahead. I don't recommend teasing college football, but you can take Louisville to seven and a half, Alabama to 11 and a half, UNLV up to eight and a half. Not crazy, okay? These numbers are sharp, but I'm taking dogs, I'm taking points in championship games. Final college bet. I'm just going to do it because we've been doing it for so long. How is Iowa going to score? Kirk Ferentz is going to try to play this game as close to the vest as possible. They don't have Cooper DeJean, DeJean, I already say Cooper's last name. I, I apologize. He ain't playing. He's their best player. Okay. He's their best defensive player. He's the best player, period. He's out for this game. You have a backup quarterback for Iowa. You've got an offensive line that is not going to move Michigan at all. This has been the topic of everyone's conversation. In the first half, the over-under on points for Iowa is a half. And at one point, that was even money to the over. Does Iowa score three points in the half? Maybe. How many points is Michigan going to score? This is my fear. I feel like Michigan wins the game 28-0 or 28-3. If it gets 28 to 6, there's your 22 point number. Now, I did bet that too. I laid the 22 points, but I'm not going to have you guys lay 22 points because 22 points officially in a championship game is insane. I know it's an insane bet. It's dumb. I just can't get around the idea that Iowa's not scoring. So the better play is the under, under 35. How many points will Iowa give up? Forget Iowa scoring. How many points will Iowa give up? That's the question. I don't see them giving up 30 points. Now, they might. If they turn the ball over, they might. But what does Michigan really want to do with throwing the ball here? Just run the ball, right? Run the ball, 28 nothing. get the hell out of Dodge, and you're good. Score two touchdowns in the first half, be up 14 nothing at the break, score two touchdowns in the second half, 28 nothing, and you're done. All good, moving on. It's going to be a pretty boring game. That's how I think it's going to go. 35 points seems to be too many. I'm going to bet under. If I lose, I lose. Okay, if I lose on it, I lose on it. If I lose on it, I'm going to cover the 22. So you can bet tw- both to kind of, you know, save yourself. Because if I was scoring, then Michigan's going to, I think, have to open it up. And I think Michigan could really put up a big number. So, like, that's how the game goes over if Iowa scores. But I think if Iowa does wind up scoring, and then Michigan's going to look to turn it on and try to have to really push more, throw the ball more, be more aggressive, which I don't think they're going to have to be, just given Iowa's inept offense. Like, I just don't see Iowa suddenly becoming this, like, team that could score 10 points in the game. They might, but their team total is six and a half. Two field goals. 28-6, I think, is the final. That's right on the number. It's on 22, okay? Better bet, that's 34, by the way. You know, that's right there. <laughs> 28-6 is right there. That's how low this number is. It's going to be one possession either way. We've been very fortunate with Iowa unders. We've literally had multiple games come down like the Nebraska game, right? Just the last game, Nebraska versus uh, versus Iowa. That game probably should have gone over. There are three missed kicks, but it didn't. They missed kicks. This is indoors in Indianapolis, so probably the kicks get made, but... Again, championship setting, Jim Harbaugh back. I don't know. Let's go for you know a 24 nothing win, and I'll catch both plays. But just on principle, I'm betting the under 35 for Michigan and Iowa here. If Iowa wins the game, it's like a 10-7 game. It's going, it's going under. If Iowa wins, it's going under. And then our future bet is up in smoke, and we're toast. <laughs> so let's see what happens there. Um, one non-college football bet to make. And Iowa, sorry, Iowa. Vegas is hosting Washington here in town. There are so many things going on in tomorrow in Vegas. It's crazy. USC is playing Gonzaga in college basketball here in town. The Golden Knights are hosting the Washington Capitals here in town. You have the UNLV and Mount in and Boise State Mountain West Conference Championship game here in town. We just had the Pac-12 Championship game here last night. This is a crazy sports weekend for Las Vegas. I mean, it's just unbelievable. But 
Washington has been an under team on the road. And Vegas is, look, you want to bet a first period under for Vegas? Very consistent. You get even money on it, okay? Don't mind it in the least here for that. Vegas is 8-3 and three to the under at home over their last over the 11 games they've played at home over their last five for Vegas. They are three and two to the under over their last three, three and oh to the under total is six on the road for Washington. Washington is right there as well as a team that is consistently going under on the year. Washington has gone. uh, Let's see to the under. Washington is, well, that's for the season, right, on the road for Washington? Uh, five and three to the under so far. Over the last five games for Washington on the road, Washington is, um, I swear it was four and one, right? Uh, yep, four and one. Washington's four and one to the under. Now, it's Darcy Kemper. That's a little scary. But Logan Thompson at home has a tremendous goals against average. He's much better at home. It should be Thompson. I don't mind if it's Hill, but it should be Thompson up against Darcy Kemper here. Total is six at minus 105. Under six goals, Vegas and Washington. I'll be on the under in the first period as well. If you want to go ahead and jump on that, I'm going to take that shot as well. But officially under six, Vegas and Washington for 1.05 units on that. Okay. So I told you it's going to be a big slate. We got a lot of things. I was ice on Friday. Hopefully this doesn't carry over. I've been sort of ping-ponging back and forth with hitting bets and not hitting bets each and a day. So I was bad yesterday. Hopefully I'm better today. Officially, UNLV plus 2.5, 1.1 units. Alabama plus 5.5, 1.1 units. Louisville plus 1.5, 2 units, 2.2 units, okay, to win two. These are the win one, win one, win two. Iowa, Michigan, under uh, 35 for 1.1 units. And we're going under six, Vegas, Washington for 1.05 units. Okay. Monster slate. If I'm bad, I bury the week. (laughs) We're down on the week already. Uh, 1.6 or seven down. If I'm cold here and I'm bad, it just blasts us and it ruins the entire week and we're dead and hope we'll go to Sunday trying to just kind of stem the bleeding and try to just get back. It's a dangerous day. Hopefully it's a good day. Lots to come in the Discord channel, bettingpros.com slash chat. Again, the leans plays I've made officially that are not are not official. The over in the Mountain West Conference Championship game at 60. The over in Alabama, Georgia in the SEC Championship game at 55. The Michigan minus 22 in the game against Iowa in the first period under for Vegas and Washington. That number is even money for under one and a half goals for that. So those are for extra plays if you want extra to go into this as well. Again, I don't know what I'm doing with Texas and Alabama. I don't know if I'm going to buy it. I'm not going to do it official. I think we're just going to wait. Officially, I'm going to wait to see what the final four is and then play off that. So you can buy them if you want, but. I got to see what's happening. Florida State is the really big hook here because if they win and they beat Louisville, we'll lose two units. And then we got to have it. And really, I'm losing more than that, but that's officially I'll lose two units. I bet a lot more <laughs> on on uh, on Florida State and on Louisville for this game. So hopefully we make some money back here. I want Louisville wins the game or Florida State wins by one. Best case scenario is FSU wins by one. That's the best case scenario for the game. So Let's see if we can get that to come home. And then we're really sitting pretty with FSU in the playoff and winning two units already here coming in off of that Louisville ACC final. So good luck to us. I'll talk to you guys in the Discord channel, bettingpros.com slash chat to get in. My name is Matt Peralta. You guys can follow me across all socials at Sports Talk Matt every single morning. The Daily Juice podcast is being brought to you by OmahaStakes.com.